Alrighty. Hello, YouTube. We're doing a VOD review of one of my viewers, Fairy Lights, who is right now, she got one VOD review a week ago or two, and she was a bronze Nico, and now she is actually a silver Nico. So, improvement, and we're going to see if we can help her out here. If you want VOD reviews, um, you can watch my stream and build up 40k channel points by watching me, which will get you a free VOD review. Or you can donate $20, and you can get a private VOD review off stream or something if you want, or on stream if that's what you want. But anyways, let's get into it. So Fairy Lights is playing Nico versus Misfortune Nautilus. So the first thing we're going to say about this game is just looking at the enemy team comp, you should always look at the team comp and just visualize what build you're going to be going in the game just to start. You don't always necessarily stay to the build you're visualizing, but it's important to think about it. So if you look at their team comp, they have one, two, three, four APs. Misfortune has AP damage on her E, but four APs. And they also have one, two, three, four champions who have hard CC and quite long CCs. So to start off, I would say this is a great game for Nico to be going Merc Treads, as you're getting the Magic Resist for the 4 APs and the Misfortune E, and you're getting Tenacity for all the CC. So this is definitely a game where I would recommend going Merc Treads into. Um, or you could still go Pen Boots. And there's a level 1 invade going on, so, you know. Low elo be like that. It's good that she didn't point anything and waited till she saw them to put a point in her E. Shouldn't have gone back in Wasted Flash, but it is what it is. I don't need to harp on that, because we already all know that. And the enemy team is still... So at this point, when the enemy team is um, Banshees, I prefer Abyssal Mask, but yeah, Banshees would be fine this game. So to start off, we already know that you're down Flash. We already know that their whole team is possibly here. We don't know if it was 5 or not, but we definitely know that we don't have 5, right? And there's a very good chance they do have 5. So at this point, if you really want to like be like criticizing your play, you should probably be pinging B. And making your jungle just go. Your jungle should just start topside and play vertical jungle and like go from here to here. You shouldn't be contesting this because we don't know if they have five or not. But um, ye. your team probably wouldn't listen if you ping B anyways. So here's the reinvade that you could have pinged B if you were being five head. They didn't have five though. It was actually a four before. So this is unfortunate start to the game, but we'll see how it goes. Um, and we'll look at the runes right now. So good stuff. I would go. I've been switching off these runes, but I guess, I mean, I don't really like, I usually take these runes if I'm going to be rushing Zhonya's first item, but it's like, who are you rushing Zhonya's for? Zhonya's is to avoid getting killed by tanks. Zhonya's isn't going to stop you from getting ulti by Malzahar. It's not going to stop you from being put to sleep by uh, the Lilia. It's not going to stop you unless you have like crazy reaction time. You're not going to be able to Zhonya's the any ulti, right? So it's like really, I feel like this game is a low value Zhonya's rush game. So I feel like these runes are kind of rip i would have preferred to see even just like going into the resolve tree or instead of taking perfect timing just like i mean you could take and just sit on it for a while but i just don't think zanya's is the rush this item game but anyways so let's start off the lane phase here so you get a nice little e oh nice um so the one thing you have to i i do this too by the way this is something i need to work on but when you auto attack you aggro the whole minion wave right so if you were going to proc Electrocute here, I would say it's worth it. So you either have to auto her two times here, which might be a bit of an overextension or not auto at all. Because as soon as you auto attack her, all three of these minions will aggro onto you. And some of the melee minions will. And these are going to be doing 24 damage per auto, right? Their ADC does 62 damage, right? So if you trade one auto, even if Misfortune doesn't auto you back, you're still going to be taking one auto attack worth of damage from these minim minions as a minimum, right? Because these three are adding up to the same amount of AD she has. So auto attack, and then you also took an auto from her. So you're just taking, right? See that auto? And then you see how right after you autoed it, look at this minion's autoing you, this minion's autoing you, this one's trying to auto you, this one's autoing you, auto, auto, right? So you're taking t like literally like just way worse damage. The one thing I like is you walked into the bush. When you walk into the bush, it de the minions, so that was good. Also, don't use your auto attacks to kill the casters. Use them to kill melees. But to be honest, the trade seemed okay, so... I mean, it's like I said, I usually do that too. It's just something you have to be mindful of. But you did the right thing of walking in the bush and de so I like it in general. It's fine. I probably would have done the same thing, because I am a believer in low elo. You have to play over aggro and pressure the enemy. So I think it was fine. And it was a 2v1 and your ADC could help you, so. But uh, we got this wave. So at this point, um, you should have started auto-attacking earlier. So you should need to be thinking ahead of like what your game plan is with the lane phase, right? So at this point right here, the wave is crashing right here, right? You want to all in on their ADC 
but right here it's hard to find all ins because she's right by her tower so you want to shove this wave in so you want to be auto attacking the cannon minion as soon as it comes that's the one the the, the benefit of running relic shield and why i like relic shield so much is because it really helps you on this wave push the cannon minion in right you can get a quick shove on it so as soon as this wave's coming in right now you have to be asking yourself right so you go for a good root here you miss but after this root you have to ask yourself like what do you want to do with this wave do you want the wave frozen here the answer is no you want the wave either here or you want the wave under their tower right or like even frozen here i guess but like in general you want the wave here or under their tower you don't want the wave here so at this point you should be using your relic shield and just auto attacking the cannon and trying to shove this wave in to make sure it hits because the thing is is also their tower takes a long time to kill this wave because it's a cannon minion and if this wave doesn't hit tower quick enough it'll take this tower so long to kill the cannon minion that the next wave will crash here again because of the fact that it's going to take this tower so many auto attacks to kill it so you really want to get this wave into the tower like as fast as possible so like right now as i'm saying you're not auto attacking the wave oh also really big big no no you didn't take w level two i think e and q is fine versus range matchups but versus melee supports you always you always need w because it's your only way to avoid getting fully comboed i'll explain the, how it fully works here in a sec but the other thing i want to touch on is because you're running relic shield you're gonna have mana issues um remember when i said i didn't like stopwatch here honestly biscuits is fine if you're gonna be taking q level two you should just take biscuits biscuits is really good i always take biscuits if i start if i take q level one and anyone who takes q level one on nico i always take the biscuits runes if you don't know biscuits how they work is they give you 10 percent of your missing health and mana back when you pop them so you don't want to pop them when you're max hp you want to or mana you always want to pop them when you're low so what you do is you wait until you're so oom um, you can't even cast another spell and you pop a biscuit and you're back up to this much. You use a couple spells, you pop a biscuit, you're back up to there, right? So if you're going to be taking early points in Q, you should always go biscuits so that you can spam. But uh, because you took Relic Shield and not Spell Thieves and no biscuits, I could see you really soon just running out of mana. Where if you took W, you could be getting the same amount of damage in basically, but not be wasting mana. But anyways, how the interaction works with Nautilus is you want to push W the second the hook hits you. You don't want to W too early or or after it hits. As soon as the wave con the hook connects onto you, if you tap W instantly, Nautilus hooks you, but he can't auto attack you. And Nautilus's auto attack is like a root, and you're gonna be invisible, and he's not gonna be able to auto attack root you. So as soon as the hook hits you, you go in W, the hook hits, and then you come out of invisibility. He's getting his anchor up, ready to auto attack you. You take a step backwards, and then root Q auto him to proc um, electrocute, and he just loses the trade. So ye. Uh, automatically uh, a after hook so it's a good counter yes exactly so you just want to make sure you tap w the second the hook like right as the hook's about to connect on you you pop w and you stop him from being able to root you out of the hook um so yeah i definitely think not taking w level two into a melee lane is really troll also you didn't get the cannon so you must have missed micro managed the thing somewhere good q poke though i like it okay um your ADC is kind of inting, but let's just see if you could have played any more aggressive here in general. So first of all, we don't know where the jungle is, but it's pretty safe to assume that he went top because we saw the bot lane leash. And in this elo, okay, their jungle is bot, so this is why you can't always assume. But either way, at this point, see the reason why it's hard here is because you don't have W. And it, because you don't have W, you have no way to protect your ADC because usually you'd eat the hook for your ADC uh finally a good night last night five wins one losses but it was a struggle every win i went even yesterday and today i think after you you could throwing the q first was fine you should have qe'd and then she would have been stuck in the thing and then you could have auto attacked her for the uh, the electrocute and she would have been like down to here to be honest if you ignite her there because like how many more bounces is it okay she sat in all the bounces she got hit by all of them this is 88 damage and this is 90, right? She would have been pretty close to dead. And the Electric Q proc, right? She would have basically been dead, except she would have popped um, heal and lived. But heal for Ignite is worth, because Ignite is a lower cooldown than heal. And always getting the heal when you're Ignite is always good. And if your ADC sees you all inning and auto attacks, you kill her. The only reason I'm being super hyper-focused on this is because last time I watched your VOD review, you played way better than i thought you would in the elo so this is the kind of stuff i'm going to focus on because if you really want to climb fast i think the way you play you play smart and well 
and I think you'll climb slowly over time. But if you want to climb fast, you have to start learning how to abuse matchups and get kills. You have to learn. Remember when I was talking to you in my Discord the other day when I told you that, in my opinion, when I play, this is this is my mentality when I play in low elo. And a mentality I think everyone should have, even though you're going to int a lot of games. You should always play perma aggro as hard as you can all the time. And it doesn't matter if you die over and over again. Just keep playing perma aggro in low elo because A, you need to learn your limits. B, you need to learn how to play over aggro and like play super aggressive. Because if you play super aggressive, you learn what you can and can't do. And second, you need to learn to carry your games. And if you're not playing super aggro, you're not going to be carrying your games. You can play super smart, which is what I usually focus on on VOD reviews is teaching how to play smart. The last VOD review I did for you, I realized you were playing pretty smart. Like macro wise, you were pretty like, you know, like high gold, low plat macro wise. So you're playing smart. But if you play smart, that's still just coin flipping teammates because you're still just coin flipping that your teammates will play well and you're just playing smart. So if you keep doing that consistently over time, you'll slowly climb. But if you want to climb fast, you have to learn how to abuse stuff. So like this is like an example of where it's like you're playing too passive. And it's like if you want to climb fast, you have to abuse moments like this. Right. So it's like if you watch here. After you throw the Q, you instantly run away. You don't even consider the idea that you could throw anything else, right? Like, watch. Like, right here, you could have easily Q, E, auto attack, proc electrocute, ignite her, get her heal out. Your ADC can maybe pressure her. She's probably popping heal, maybe even flashing out. Either way, you're just pressuring her. Now she's walking back here, getting zoned from CS and stuff. But yeah. It's, it's a small thing, but that's what you have to focus on, like, if you want to really climb fast. I have to schedule a VOD review with you. It's always open. Another thing, again, again, I'm just focusing on you playing hyper aggro. Because, again, your macro seemed pretty good last time I watched you. So, like, again here, your reaction is to walk away. Right? So, watch. Your ADC is getting hooked. First of all, if you go for the ADC here with your combo, if you walk up and E the ADC and hit her with a Q auto, you have electrocute up now? Yeah, you do. Like, right there, if you went and threw it on their ADC, who has no heal, she either has to flash it, and your ADC is going to live anyways, because your ADC has heal flash up. So, like, the ADC either has to flash it, or the ADC sits in it and dies, right? So, the rule of thumb in support, unless your ADC is literally... Like, the thing is, is Nautilus already used his Q, right? And he's already got most of his damage off, right? Like, rooting him isn't stopping much damage at this point. Like, think about this. You're trying to keep your ADC alive. Like, forget about the fact that I'm looking for a kill right now. Just in general, as a support, if they engage on your ADC, you always counter-engage on the enemy ADC. Because right now, Nautilus is just going to auto-attack a couple of times, right? So he's going to be getting in, you know, um, an 32 plus. He's doing 100 damage per auto. Their ADC is going to get the, the this 33 damage Plus, she's going to get an auto attack Q, which is 87 damage. Plus, she's doing 67 damage per auto. So, clearly, when you think about it, the ADC is going to be doing way more damage to your ADC than the support. So, I know you're just panicking in reaction, but if you go on their ADC here, you potentially get a kill, you, or you get her flash. And, yeah, just going on Nautilus was not the right choice. Okay, but see here how you're walking away? Look at your HP bar, and look at their HP bars. This is where I'm saying you're playing too passive. Nautilus has no hookup. There's no reason. You should be auto-attacking him to death here. Again, I'm focusing on you playing hyper aggro because this is what I think you need to work on the most. Right? So what's your reaction here after the hook? So first of all, your reaction to throw it on Nautilus is wrong. Always throw on AC. But here, I would, if it were me playing right now, first of all, I would have thrown the Q on ADC, obviously. But I would right now be auto-attacking their ADC. I wouldn't even run away. There's a 0% chance your ADC has heal. Nautilus has no Q up. There's a 0% chance you die here. You just start auto-attacking their ADC. If their ADC doesn't run away, it dies. Right? If it does run away, then you just got damage on it, and then you switch autoing Nautilus until he runs out of age. There's no reason here for you to be running away. And you have to, again, ask yourself, what uh, what do they have? Nautilus has no hook. That's, like, the one thing in this lane you're scared of. You're scared of nothing but a Nautilus hook. Right? And, yeah. That's the only thing you're scared of, and it's down. So you just auto-attack instead of running away. You're getting no damage in there. So you got one auto-attack on return, but you could have just ran at them and kept autoing. Maybe even kill Nautilus. He has no flash up and no heal. You probably could have killed Nautilus if you just kept autoing him. Nice try. Keep no, keep going for it. You're not going to save her. It's okay. I, I won't talk about that, but yeah. It's fine.
I definitely think you missed a couple of kill opportunities this game, though. You missed one when you hit the E on her there. You missed one where you didn't EQ her instead on Nautilus. And you missed another kill when you started running away instead of just auto-attacking. And even maybe one at the end there where you didn't chase her and go for the kill when you saw Lilia come. So you've maybe missed four or five opportunities to get a kill. Which again, I play over aggro all the time. I don't care if I'm dying. I always play over aggro and low elo because I want to get myself kills so I can carry the game. I don't care if Misfortune gets a ton of kills. Because guess what? In low elo, you're just going to be able to rocket belt one shot or every fight. Who cares if she gets six kills? Give her six kills in lane. She has a 500 gold shutdown. You kill her once. You pick up that 500 gold shutdown. Every single fight, just kill Misfortune and then boom. Doesn't matter that you fed her. In high elo, that wouldn't be a good strategy because the misfortune would position well. She wouldn't let you get to her and you would have just inted. But in low elo, she's not going to play well. You're going to be able to flash ulti her on cooldown, right? So I play over aggro. Some games are hard into low elo and it's just like you lose because of it. But the thing is, everyone on your team is going to be playing over aggro. And if everyone on your team is playing over aggro and you're not, again, you're just coin flipping, hoping your teammates will get fed and carry you. You don't want to do that. You want to coin flip yourself. And if you don't get fed and carry and you int, well, at least you learned what you were doing wrong and right in that position. But anyways, let's continue. We're only four minutes into the game and this VOD review is already like 10 minutes long. All right, nice. This is just, all I have to say about this is basic auto attack kiting. Your ADC may not have had to flash if you were basic. So go into practice tool and practice this, but it's called auto attack kiting. It's where you move in between autos, right? So auto, good Q, right? Auto, you take one step here. Right? You stand still here in auto again. After this auto goes down, you take a step right there, auto. A step right there, auto. A step right there, auto. You always, in between autos, take a step closer. Because they're trying to run away from you. And you want to try and get ahead of them. So you want to keep taking them steps. So watch here. Again, I'm being super hyper focused on your like small things this time. Because last time, I focused on your macro. Because I thought you were a bronze player and you wouldn't have good macro. But your macro wasn't bad. So it's like, watch. You're standing still. You're not moving. Right? And now you can't get another auto in. If you were walking forwards, there's a good chance you could have got one or two more autos on him. And you might have died without your ADC having to flash. Your ADC probably... If I were to be a gambling man, I would say your ADC, even if you auto-kited, would have had to flash. You probably would have lived by one auto, but it would have been close. Help your ADC push here. Just throw your Q. Yep, throw your Q at the wave. Nice. Um, Right here, you just recall. Usually. You're not going to, but it, it, I mean, it's decent time not to recall, to be honest. It's fine. Even another play, by the way, you could be looking here is after you killed it and you helped shove, you can roam up the river, right? Because your ADC doesn't need you to help take a plate. And my mentality in low elo is you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket because if you put all your eggs in your ADC and then your ADC starts inting and isn't good, then you just lose the game. So like my mentality is spread the gold throughout the team. So like you got your ADC a kill, you helped her shove into tower. Even if she doesn't get the play without you, I don't know. A good play was to also just roam up mid, see if you can gank mid. And then if you were roaming up mid, right, you could have maybe helped this jungle fight because you would have been close, sir. Or you could have helped the mid lane shove a wave on your tower. Right? And then help, like, you know, him get a plate or something. I don't know. There's just other stuff you could have done other than just, you know, helping your ADC take a plate. Auto. You were taking tower aggro, so I get it, but it's a 1v2, and if you auto attack her, you get your empowered auto damage down, plus you proc electrocute. Okay, your electrocute. Yeah, your electrocute is up. I feel like it's worth the tower auto just to get that empowered auto electrocute there, since it was a 2v1. Also, better manage your empowered auto proc, your uh, relic shield procs, because you've now missed two cannons. And you're going to be really behind on your support item if you do that a lot. I still think, though, it's better to just take spell thieves in this elo. When I'm playing in this elo, I take spell thieves, personally. Because I'm just throwing spells so much in low elo because people play, like, not good. Bit of a weird W. I guess you were scared they're doing dragon or something. Do you guys have any wards to place? You don't. Um, you, one thing you should note, which I don't expect you to like take this in, but you saw them fighting on all the camps here and you know, all her top side camps are down. So, you know that she's coming bot side. So most likely if I were a betting man, I would say she's like right now, like right here. She is not, but she's still heading to her bot side jungle, right? So either way, uh, you have to be wary of the fact that Lily is heading towards you right now. <coughs> Oh, God bless me. Ah, one more K point to tell VOD review. Hell yeah. Alrighty. 
So yeah, note that their jungler is probably coming bot. It's actually a decent time. Oh. Well, I do think it's good to use your W to face check bushes. I try my hardest versus Nautilus Leona specifically to never W ever other than to just block a hook. I mean to eat a hook. Because you threw your W here and if Nautilus didn't hook that, all of a sudden Nautilus can walk up and zone you. And you have 20 seconds of where you can't do anything and Nautilus can zone you. Now you got lucky and Nautilus hooked your clone, so that's good. But it was okay because you were just trying to figure out where he was. But I'm just saying to be careful of that. Again, you're going on the support. You should probably be trying to eat this hook for your ADC. Their jungler's bot like I predicted. And it goes to hell. There's not much to say about that, but... Just... Yeah. <laughs> you should have definitely tried to eat the hook for ADC, considering you have flash up, though. But, yeah. I mean, like I said, Lilia was hitting bot, so... That's why after you guys shoved the wave and took the plate, you usually just recall anyways. Nice. You're doing dragon, but you can't really contest it because you are got no uh, stealth thieves, so I would just back right now. Just back. Okay. After backing, you do not need to go bot right now. This wave is pushing into your tower because their ADC is auto-attacking. Right? This wave is pushing your ADC. Your ADC is full HP. There's almost as like the there is a slight chance that Nautilus and Lilia are gonna be going here and trying to dive your ADC. But like in this ELO, I would say it's like under half a percent chance that your ADC is getting dove right now, right? Like See, like your ADC is not getting dove. Right? So again, looking for like plays you can do. You don't need to go bot straight away. You can walk straight mid and just place a ward here. Um you can place your control ward here, or you can use a sweeper. You have a regular ward. You can just place a regular ward here and then come back. It's just good to get vision for your teammates because, again, you want to increase your odds of winning, and helping your mid laner be safe and not die to ganks increases your odds of winning. So pathing mid and placing a ward here before you go bot just increases your chances of winning because it increases the chance that your mid laner is not going to die to a gank or that your mid laner can play more aggro because maybe your mid laner is going to passively farm here. But then you place a ward here, and now your mid laner can push up a bit and play more aggressive and zone more. So, instead of just walking straight bot, there's like almost no chance your ADC needed you right now, right? So, this was a time where you should have just been walking mid and getting vision control here. And then you could have been with your mid laner, and you could have been coming with your mid laner and ganking with him or something. Just every time you back... So when I'm auto-attacking this ward, okay, your W's not up, but you want to take your W and you want to get your W here. So you send your W so it walks here, because here is where you're scared of the most. It'll walk here, you don't see anyone there, it walks there, and if there's no one there, you can keep autoing. You should use your W though, yep. Nice, and your W's going there, nice. Perfect. Again, you're going to learn soon, but your reaction is never to ever throw your combo on Nautilus. He's tanky. When Nautilus goes in, he procs Aftershock. And Aftershock, like, let's watch him, actually. Right? Watch how tanky he's going to get. So right now, he's taking 44 and 26% reduced damage. Oh, is this Aftershock? Cool? No, it's not. I'm confused. Well, either way, he gets really tanky. And you could have just gone on their ADC. You had your W up. You could have just W'd, gotten range of their ADC, and thrown your combo on her instead. Always. Almost always. There's very rare circumstances. Like, this is one of the rare circumstances where going on Nautilus was okay. Because Nautilus was super close to being dead. Right? That's one of the rare circumstances because Nautilus was in kill range. But if Nautilus isn't in kill range, never, ever ever go on the freaking support over the ADC. Um, so again, ask yourself, where do you need to be right now? The answer is probably not bot. The wave is going to connect here in the middle. Which means that your ADC will auto it and it will be pushing to the enemy. But that just means you have to be back bot quicker. You probably go mid. 
You could even maybe have cheesed the kill mid on her. If not, you could force her B, maybe freeze the wave, help it for your Nushin. Probably not, but I'm just saying. Yeah, you're going towards mid now. Good. You're thinking of it just a little late. See, and because you were roaming mid, see, this is why I said I was focusing more on small things for you with like the hyper aggressive because your macro is actually pretty good. I mean, you came up with the idea a bit late, but you still came up with the idea and it got you a free kill. So every time you back, just think if there's anywhere else you can be going. So good job. What's up? Nothing. We're just doing a VOD review. Nice try. It's just a miss. I miss too. Pro players miss. Everyone misses. It's just is what it is. So again, it's okay because of the fact that Nautilus isn't there. If Nautilus was there, I'd say don't waste your W. Also, again, looking at hyper focus things because, like I said, I think your biggest thing you need to improve on if you want to climb. Because I think you'll climb if you keep playing like this. You play consistent and clean from what I've seen so far. You just have to start learning to get leads for yourself to carry and playing over aggro. And some games you will int now because it's going to take you a while to learn how to play hyper aggro and not int. But... If you don't learn how to play hyper aggro on Nico, you'll never un truly unlock her power. So like right here, you W forwards and you should just look for an EQ on her. If you hit it, it's most likely a kill because your ADC has ulti and stuff, right? So like here, right? You're right now in root range, right? You root Q auto, your ADC ultis, and this is literally a free kill. Who are we watching? We're watching Fairy Lights and it's a silver four VOD review. So this was again, an opportunity for you to kill her. If you just threw your combo at her. Nice, ulti. I mean, your ADC should have got it, but you should have just ulted anyways. I'm not going to rewatch that because you already know, but you just don't take kills for granted, even if it is free. If your ADC just ulted it, it was 100% a kill. Like 100%, that was a kill if your ADC is better. But until you get to about platinum elo, I would say, I wouldn't be expecting my ADC to finish those offs. I would just ulti it. Until plat elo, I would ulti those kind of plays because you can't trust your ADC. Ulti that. See, again, you're not, you can't, oh, you don't have mana. Again, I would be taking Spell Thieves if I were you, because you're missing kills for not having Spell Thieves. But, like, if you really like, um, if you really like Relic Shield, and if you like being able to push for two and you use it well, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying, me personally, I take spell thieves in this elo too because you're just perma fighting and I'm running out of mana. But you don't have to. If you really like Relic Shield, it's perfectly fine to keep running it if you like it. I'm just saying, personally, versus tank supports especially, you can get a lot of poke in versus tank supports. Okay, this is a Sag. Not much you could do though because you were Oom, so. Yeah, at this point, again. Uh, your jungler is heading bot side. Yeah, I guess going down here is fine. I was going to say this is also a good opportunity where you and Gragas could have been taking Rift Herald and then diving top with it. But your Gragas is bot side, so you can't. If your Gragas was top side, I would just go Rift Herald right now. But it works out. You guys get all these pickups, so that's cool. You died, but I'm sure you played that as well as you could. I wasn't really paying attention, but let's watch over here again. Shut down. Um, right now, you have your support item done, right? You do not. See, if you had spell thieves, your support item would be done now, too. Well, you have this ward, too. After you kill this ward, it's really good to get a ward right here. It's good to get a ward if you can. You kill this, you walk up and place a ward. You come here and place it over the wall right there, just to give you vision of this, too. You have here and here. Or you can place a ward here, and you can walk up and place your other ward there. For mid lane, but your mid lane's recalling, so probably I would just put a ward here and here. Again, don't waste your W versus Nautilus. Hold it. Never use it. But see, you don't have your W. And you die here because you didn't have your... You literally died. Okay, you live by a miracle. Ulti, ulti. Or is it on, oh, it was on cooldown. You literally died because you didn't you didn't have W up. 
right? If you have W, so Nautilus can't auto attack you. If right here you push W, Nautilus flies in, he can't auto attack you, right? And you just walk away, right? And there's no way you die. You don't even have to use your flash. You probably just live without having to flash. Either way, you 100% live if you had your W up. So don't waste your W versus Nautilus. It's really important to have it up for if he hooks you. Is your ADC gonna ulti it? Ulti ADC. He's gonna flash it, but ulti. Okay, never mind. Nice, Pog. If she ultied, she would have flashed it. Wait, she had heal. She's just trolling. She should have just healed. If she heals, she outranges the Jinx auto. And then she actually has a better chance of dodging the Jinx ult with the move speed without having to blow flash either. Oh, this is looking juicy. Nice. Free flash. Just another thing. Another one of those things where... Another auto attack kiting thing. Right? So... Whoopsies. Just another thing about auto attack kiting, right? So here... I get that you're kind of scared, but you know Jinx... You have two people. And you know that their ADC is dead. So... This is one of those things where I say... I would probably just play hyper aggro. Instead of walking away, you walk forwards and you can get there and click this before he can click it, right? You're standing still and not auto attack kiting. When you rooted him, you could have auto attack kited, got behind him, and maybe autoed that before he gets over the wall. Just a small thing, but it could have possibly been another kill. If you had a ward up, you should have placed in that bush when you were there too, but you don't. But didn't? Yeah, but again, don't focus on teammates. I didn't focus. I'm not focusing really ever on what Jinx is doing right or wrong in this VOD review. I'm just focusing on you. And it's like what you could have done here better is if you just walked up and auto attack Kaiden, right? You made your Jinx have to flash here. Jinx, like Jinx, you're saying you're Jinx, right? But down here where you didn't auto attack Kite and he, your ADC was forced to waste flash, Jinx could be saying the same thing about you. Like, damn, my Nico's like so bad. She wasn't auto attack Kiting and I'd have wasted my flash, right? Everyone can always notice other people's mistakes, but you need to notice your own, right? So it doesn't matter. Your ADC could say the same thing about you for a couple of plays this game. Like every time you focus the support, when you hook the ADC, your ADC could be sitting there being like, I'm so frustrated. My support keeps tunneling the Nautilus instead of going on the ADC, right? It's like everyone makes stupid mistakes. Everyone always thinks. It's a common thing, to be honest, where people, I do it too, personally, but Everyone focuses on their teammates' mistakes instead of theirs, and they go, man, if I had better teammates, if my teammates were making this mistake and this mistake, but realistically, your teammates are saying the same thing about you. You're making mistakes all over the place that your teammates will be saying about you, so what could you have done better? You could have auto-attack kited towards that blast cone, and then you maybe could have denied him the out, and then you would have got the kill. If you don't know how to auto-attack kite, you should just go into practice tool and practice it a bit. It's not too hard. Well played. Well played, well played. I feel like your spacing could be better here. So, one thing I've talked about in other VOD reviews before for other people is people's range of threat. What range are they actually a threat in killing you, right? You have three people here. Their misfortunes, <coughs> misfortune bot. Their top laner's top. Their mid laner's dead. At worst here, it's Lilia and Nautilus, right? So if Nautilus is in this bush, he's no threat to you. So it's literally just her, and you have three people. So her range of threat, I would say, is basically her Q range. It's basically this. She can throw her E, but her E is very easy to dodge, in my opinion. So her range of threat is here. So you could right now, I get you're running away from this thing, which is fine, but I feel like there's a point here where you're just too far, right? Like you're way, you're running away, right? But you should be running towards Lilia because Lilia's range of threat is like here and you could be like here and you have your root up in three seconds, right? And you could have like connected a root. If you were closer, you could have connected this root, right? You missed this root. She flashes it. So it is what it is. I don't think you positioning well maybe would have changed much, but I'm just saying. Positioning wise, you don't need to be that far back. Her range of threat is pretty low. Um, Nico's range of threat, I would say. Nico's range of threat, I would say, is about like, like, like a big one. It's like this, right? Because even though Nico's root doesn't last that far, if someone's standing here, 
they're in threat of Nico stealthing and throwing a root, right? So Nico's range of threat is like this, right? I would say it sets range of threat, even though he can only E you from here. If he has his speed boost up, I'd say his range of threat for you is about like there, right? You know, Malzahar's range of threat is about this. It's good to always imagine a circle around every champ of their range of threat, because that's the range you have to watch out for. Gregus' alt is about this long, but he can also E forge, making his range of threat about here, right? So like Gregus, you want to be staying about this far away from him at all times. And once you start learning everyone's range of threat and always weaving just at the edge of it, you'll end up baiting the enemy into bad engages because they get baited by you being at the max range, but just not in it. But if you're always playing like way outside of their max range, you're never going to bait them in on you. And you're not going to always be in perfect position to follow up with plays and stuff. So yeah, that's just something to keep note of. Mm, there's not much you can really do here. You can't solo kill a top laner. Oh, set's TPing in though. Okay, nice. I like it. Does I have freaking QSS? Yeah. Hello, Dora. Nice play. Good stuff. The only thing I don't like about that play, by the way, is that Dragon is up. Right? And you showing top, if their team was any good, as soon as you and Set show top, especially because Set blew his TP for the play, so he has no way to TP to drag. As soon as they see two top, they should have just forced the dragon. But it's only a second drag, so it's not a big deal. But is that kill worth a dragon? Probably not. But it was a good play. I rate it. See, uh, you guys lose the dragon because of it. It's not like the end of the world, though. I, this dragon doesn't really do, do much, but nice root. Okay, see, again, range of threat kind of a thing. And where you're positioning. So you have your ulti up. Right? And, like, let's look how you're positioning here in this fight. So you find a good ulti root, right? So Annie has no ulti. You can see Tibbers. So you're not scared of an Annie ult, which is the only thing of Annie you're scared of. So Annie's range of threat is about this. So as long as you're outside this range, Annie can't really do anything unless she flashes on you. But if Annie in the middle of a team fight is flashing to kill you, probably not a good thing, right? So if you watch here, right, I, this is good, good. As she stops, this is where you're bad. You should be right here, right? And even though you don't have abilities up, you have empowered auto. Every three autos is empowered damage. If Annie turns and starts using her abilities on you, it's actually bad for her. To be honest, you running away from her in general was bad. You should just be auto attacking her because if she turns around and blows all her abilities on you while three of your teammates are attacking her, you just win. So... You should just be auto-attacking her. You don't need to be so scared. See, and as your root... Ooh. It's, it's a good play, but it was also unnecessary. If you were just playing around max range instead of hiding, you could have just used your ulti with Rocket Belt without having to blow your flash. Probably. So it's just another... Again, your macro is not bad, so I'm just focusing on micro things. And you're just here positioning. You need to start getting, again, used to playing hyper aggro. And to be hyper aggro, you have to at all times be standing on the very edge of every champion in the game's max range. Always. Always, always, you want to be standing just on the edge of their max range. And, yeah. Um, also, take note if they have flash or not. If you don't know if they have flash, their max range is a bit longer. So, that's something you definitely need to work on. It'll help you a lot, actually, if you can start getting used to always just weaving at the max. It's called tethering. If you want to watch YouTube videos on it, look up tethering. And that's what it's called. It's called tethering is the idea of always standing at champion's max range at all times. And weaving in and out of their auto attack range and stuff. I like the fact that you went top because Baron's spawning and you're pressuring this. Practice with spa spacing, uh, spacing champs. I can input what you're telling me into my games. Sounds good. Had to run to the restroom there. Wanted to turn the stream into a non-stop VOD review. Let me know when you think you might have time. Um, I only like to do one VOD review a day, so any stream, I like to do one. If I do VOD reviews, I like to do it at the end of the stream because I end my stream at 10. I usually do it at 9 p.m. at the end of a stream, so any day if you want to, if there's not one being done. Also, if you're planning to do it through a $20 donation, I've, I don't know how many channel points you have, but I'm, I do it off stream if you donate too, if you want to, it's up to you. Uh, and I can be in like a private call with you off stream if you want to, it's up to you. But, but anyways. 
Got a bunch of channel points? Yeah, that's fine too. Channel points, I always do it on stream at the end of stream. It's only redeemable once per stream, so Fairy Lights redeemed it yesterday. That's why it's weird. The game bugged out. Well, you're smurfing with these ulties, so that's cool. Let's rewatch that though, see how this went. What are you building? Are you building Demonic Embrace or something? I have never built any item on Nico that builds out these components. Um, you don't need Zhonya's this game. I love Zhonya's no matter what in low elo, so I would have probably gone low elo. Demonic? I'm pretty sure here Abyssal Mask is just much better. Abyssal Mask is just way better here because, again, their team has four APs. And if you're building it for tank shred, they only have one tank, and it's a Nautilus. And if you put in a 15% damage amp on Nautilus, that'll increase you and your team's damage by more than damage than you would have done with um, Demonic. I've never built Demonic on Nico. I don't think it's that great on her. That's bad components. But anyways, yeah, I think Abyssal Mask was the play here if you wanted a tanky item to do damage. It's not a, it's not terrible, though. It's fine. It, it, it gives AP... And HP, which is what Nico wants. Nico at the end of the day wants AP and HP. It gives both those things, so it's not a terrible item. But I feel like Abyssal Mask was way more efficient with your gold here. And also cheaper. Um, against Malzahar, your Rocket Belt wasn't up. If you had Rocket Belt, I would Rocket Belt to break it. If not, you can auto attack to break it. So instead of throwing your E item, you just auto attack to break the black shield and root, or you could have Q and root, but probably auto attack root is the play there. So I like the fact that you're getting vision control around Baron. Um, your team's right by pinging B. Careful here. You have no idea right now. Rule of thumb, if you don't see them on the map, they're in the bush you're standing next to. So right now you see her. And right now, you should assume Annie, Lilia, Malzahar, and Nautilus, all four of them are stacking in this bush right now and about to kill you. That's what you have to assume. You cannot assume that they're anywhere else other than all four in this bush right now. They're not, and you end up not dying, but that's what you have to assume. Good ward. Um, the ward needs to be a bit farther up, but it's okay. The idea of this ward, by the way, for people who don't know... Is the idea is that most of the time when they sweep, they're going to start here and they're going to sweep down to here. Maybe walk into the pit and they're not going to find this ward. And the idea is the ward gets vision of the entrance. So if they ever try to start the Baron, you'll have vision of them going into the pit. And they won't know you have vision because they swept all of this and they think they're not on wards. But the ward has to be a bit farther up. It has to be like there to actually get vision of the full entrance. Here it's probably only giving vision up to like maybe there. It's not 100% useful, but I like the idea. And also, you should just back. So after you... I like you went down and placed your vision around the objective. Good, good, good. Um, really important. Now you need to back and refresh your wards. You have no vision, no wards anymore. After you place your wards around the objective, you recall and get more wards and come back out. So yeah, that's the only thing you need to do is after you place those, you just needed to recall. And then it would have been A+. plus. Like right now, you're walking around here, but what's the point? You don't have wards up. And you're kind of just blindly walking around. Maybe you're going to get picked. You should have be getting more wards. Also... Dragon spawning in 50 seconds, and you want vision to control around the bear, the dragon. So, to be honest, with dragon spawning in 50 seconds, this was too much vision here. This one ward here was fine. You probably should have got your other ward, like, maybe in this bush, maybe in the middle of the mid lane. Recall for more wards, and then push out past your vision line. Something like that. See, you just got yourself killed, because you're just, like, not... You shouldn't even have been dead, because you should have just been recalled and getting more wards in the first place. It's fine, though. But this team fight is all your fault if your team all dies here. Because you're not here for it. Did I ever fail? Ye. Not only were you not there to start it, but then you also misplayed the fight. You've kind of cost your team two dragons in a row. I don't want to harp on it too much because I feel like you probably feel like it's a bit embarrassing. But first of all, there's no reason for you to ulti here, I feel. I feel like all you have to do is just EQ, auto attack, and she's just dead. Like you're trying to solo ult this Lilia. You can probably just Q auto her at this point. Like your Q does 
350 damage. You have an empowered auto up. Let's assume you don't. So 100. What are we doing? We're VOD reviewing um, a viewer. So you do 450 damage with an auto. A Q auto right now. And she has 450 HP. So if you Q auto ignite her, right? Viewing uh, subscribers games. Uh, yeah, Fairy Lights did a VOD review for 40k channel points. So right now you just Q auto ignite that procs electrocute and she just dies without you having to pop your ulti. Or even just like Q auto and rocket belt. Right, Q auto rocket belt without because like you don't necessarily want to throw your root because if you miss it, it sucks and you want it still up. You can just Q auto rocket belt her and she just guaranteed dies also. So yeah, and then you would have slide your ulti up and your root up, and then you can look for like use the move speed from the rocket belt to see if you can land a root ulti on her or something. You got the Lilia's ult, so unlucky. You got her flash unlucky, but yeah, you just didn't need to flash there or use your ulti in general. You could have just killed your through multiple ways that I just said without using your ult. Um, I'm not a fan ever of getting rid of your control ward slot for an amp tone. I'll get rid of my control ward slot for a fiendish codex, usually because that's 35 AP and 10 CDR. But for 20 AP... Um, that would have been sick if it landed all. Yes, but unfortunately it didn't. It was a good try. You almost got both of them. But anyways, I usually would not consider 20 AP to be more valuable than a control ward. And also another reason why I'm saying spell thieves is like you're 25 minutes in the game and you're still not done your relic shield. The whole reason I like relic shield is because it gives you a hundred. It gives you more HP. A tier three, a the the relic shield or the spell thieves at tier three gives 100 HP, and this at tier two gives 100 HP. So you're not even Right now, if you had Spell Thieves, you'd have the same amount of HP as you do with this anyways. So, like, the whole reason I like it isn't even getting abused here because it's taking you so long to finish it. So, yeah. I mean, again, if you really like it, you can stay with it. I'm going to stop. Like, I've already mentioned it 20 times, but you oomed a couple times where you wouldn't have. You lost gold early that you could have snowballed with, and you still only have three wards each time. Not even finished it. You keep going bot to farm waves, too. You don't need to. Just stay grouped with your team. One thing you need to know is in this elo, your team's going to perma fight all the time. And you farming bot, you've literally lost this fight here, farming the bot wave. And you just lost this fight here, farming the bot wave. You don't need to farm waves, you just need to stick with your team and force fights. That's how you win low elo games, is by everyone ARAMs in low elo. There's no point trying to play any sort of macro in low elo, because your team's going to fight. What is this? It's silver 4. Anytime you try to split push or do anything macro-wise that isn't ARAM in low elo, your team is going to fight and lose the game. There is no macro outside of low elo other than ARAM. I feel like most coaches you go to will try to teach you good macro and stuff as if you were playing at a grandmaster level, but you have to play your elo. And at the, your, this elo, you have to play perma hyper aggressive and perma ARAM with your team. It's the only way to climb. I like this flank. Um, the only thing I don't like about it... Oh, you didn't have your sweeper up. It would have been perfect if you had your sweeper up, but this is really good. The only thing I don't like so far is you haven't pinged once that you're looking to go in. That's the big thing missing with this play. It's a really good flank angle. I really like the flank angle. Just ping going in a couple times. The thing I don't like, by the way, I like the flank angle, but the bad thing is your ADC is top and your jungle is not in position. So at this point, their team already sees three. So at this point, best case scenario, it's a 3v3. So although I like this idea, it's not the correct time because if anyone else on their team shows up, you are outnumbered right now. Best case scenario for you, best case is this is a 3v3. Worst case scenario, like Nautilus is there, right? Um, Malzahar is, or whoever it is, Lilia is there, right? And you aren't pinging going in. Okay, good. Good, you're just chilling. I like this. I don't know if you have wards up, but you should be warding while you're there. Yeah, you had one ward up. Probably should have placed the ward somewhere. Ooh, I don't know about that. Rip. I'm not going to talk about that. Again, numbers. You could have just lived and you blew your flash. Feels bad. I like the ideas though. The ideas you had around here were really good ideas. Really, really good ideas. Just executed. Not at the correct time. Also, the big problem with this was... So the idea of flanking, right, is a good idea. 
But this flank is only good if you're planning on engaging. And like I said, you shouldn't. And it's good you didn't use side gear, but the problem is, is you don't have control wards on you. You do, but you didn't have your sweeper up, right? This flank, if you're planning to flank here and just chill in the bush and wait for your team, you can only do this play if you have sweeper up because you need to sweeper and walk through and make sure you're not walking on wards, right? If we look at the blue team's vision, they had a ward here and they had a ward here. So you walked over a ward here and then you're chilling in this bush and they saw you with vision. If you had a sweeper, you walk here with a sweeper and then you're like, oh, they know I'm here. I can't do this flank angle, right? From Annie Zolls, yes. But regardless of this fight here, this flank was a good idea if your team had numbers here, right? If you had all five people here and you did this same flank even without sweeper and went in and ulted, I'd be like, good, that was amazing. Good job, like you're smurfing. But you didn't have your team and you didn't have sweeper up. Without your team numbers, you had to have sweeper. Like without having 5v5 numbers, you have to have sweeper to do anything like that. Is set, uh, yeah, the set, it's not QSS, it's whatever the new, like, bruiser QSS thing is. He was versus a Malzahar top. It's actually really good, because there's Malzahar ulti, and there's Lilia ult, so like, there's almost never a case where you're never going to use it in a fight. What the hell, we switched vision. The game's looking over at this point, though. Unfortunate, you guys don't have control around. Uh, Dragon control is a thing you've struggled this game. All three dragons, I, I don't know if it was possible for you to get control around this dragon or not, but all three dragons you've lost, you haven't had any vision control around it at all. You've always not been there with vision control, so really just gotta focus on objective timers. It seems like... Like, early game? Okay, early game? Macro-wise, I'll talk about macro real quickly. Early game macro-wise looked really good and solid. You only missed, like, maybe one roam time, and that one roam time wasn't really a time you needed to roam. But your mid to late game, you like to go to the side lane too much right you went to the top side lane when dragon was spawned lost a dragon right you went to the bot side lane died dragon spawned you missed that right you went like yeah try to a ram more oh yeah and then you went to the side lane here one time and your team fought here and all died like stop going to the side lanes too much you need to be always hovering around your teammates and where they are but but overall i'm if you keep playing how you're playing and not give up free dragons. To be honest, if you didn't give up all those free dragons, there's a good chance you would have won this game, to be honest. And you missed a bunch of free kills in lane, but definitely need to work on just like getting kills in lane and snowballing your leads and stuff because you've missed a bunch of free opportunities because you're playing too passive. And it's gonna suck. You're gonna feel like bad because you're gonna lose a ton of games where you just end up inting because you played over aggro and got punished for it, but you're never gonna learn how aggressive you can play versus every champ if you don't try playing over aggro all the time, so. You just need to learn versus every champ how to play versus them. Nautilus, you always need to keep your W up. Always. Don't waste it, right? Like, And when you learn that, you can learn how to position against him when you have W. How far can you push up against him with W? Sometimes I'll walk halfway through the lane into his minion wave and just like beta hook onto me and W it and turn it on him, right? So, yeah. Anyways, for the YouTube outro, hope you guys enjoyed that VOD review. Again, if you want a VOD review, watch my stream, build up channel points for a free VOD review, or you can donate $20.00. Uh, you can message me on my Discord. There should be a Discord link below in the whatever. Um, you can message me on Discord, donate $20, and we can do a VOD review off stream for $20. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Enjoy that. And. Uh